I'm kind of enjoying this, to be honest with you. This is the closest I'll get to being a part of any singing group in my life. <laughs> so I was hoping you'd kind of linger a minute. And I've got a little musical notes up here and song, and, and uh, I don't know what to do with it, but I do enjoy it. I want to thank you for preparing our hearts to worship, taking us to the throne. And it was so sweet. And uh, it made it special. A family. But aren't we all family? And it's always special when I walk through the doors at Fairview. It's family. And I consider this my second church home. I'm in a different church a lot of Sundays. And I enjoy that. But uh, Fairview, I say this with all sincerity. You hold a very, very special place in my heart. So uh, I want to thank you for all the things that you have, are about today. I know it's like a whirlwind in here, and, but it's good, and you are in the center of God's will. God's will is not always easy, but God's will is always right. The perfect will of God is difficult to discern, but the perfect will of God is always right. Those are the words of Dr. George W. Truitt, that great pastor of First Baptist Church, Dallas. For over 40 years, he stood behind that pulpit, and that's exactly what he said. The will of God is not always easy, but the will of God is always right. I've had that, I've had that illustrated in my life many times over these years. I was to speak that night over the other side of Culpeper, and I was trying to put the last-minute touches on my notes, and I had some things to do in town. We live out towards Spotsylvania, and I told my wife, I said, Honey, would you drive me to town, and I'll be able to write, and that way I won't be able to write while I'm driving. That's not a good idea, is it? And uh, I said, Honey, would you drive me, and I'll, I'll finish these notes. We got in the car, and we started down the driveway and put, got to the end of the driveway, and there he was covered from head to toe with dirt and mud. And he walked with a distinct limp. And he had a black lunchbox in his hand, and he walked down that line of the road, headed towards Snail. And as I sat there and I looked over my notes, I said, oh, honey, he sure is, sure has done a hard day's work. And he sure is crippled up badly, isn't he? We turned and headed towards town. I finished the notes up. And uh, we got back very quickly. And as we started into the driveway, I could see the top of his head just the other side of our house. And he's still walking. I said, that poor fellow's not gotten very far, has he? So uh, I ran in and I looked at my watch and I'm late. I said, Lord, I've got to hurry. If I'm going to make it in time for dinner tonight, I'm going to have to hurry. I said, it's important. and I've got a part on the program. I've got to be there. I've got all my notes together, put everything together, run in, put my suit on, come down driveway as hard as I could run down the driveway, and I could still see the top of his head just kind of bobbing down in that direction. I had to go in that direction. I turned the car and started as hard as I could towards where I was supposed to be. And when I got to the courthouse over Spotsylvania, just as clear as if it had come across the t these speakers, the Lord spoke to my heart. Dr. Sizemore talked about that this morning, God speaking to your heart. I'm here to urge you to please hear and, and really take heed to those callings when God speaks to your heart. That's when you know you're in the will of God. And God spoke to my heart, and he said, where are you going? Does he ever ask you that? Does he ever ask you that in your heart? And I said, Lord, please, tonight, you know I'm late. I, I've got to hurry. I, 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 I'm in a hurry, Lord. As if the Lord didn't know that already, you know? And I said, please, Lord. He said, what about that young man? What about that young man? And I pulled in a parking lot, and it just tore me up. 
I said, Lord, you let him be there when I get back, and I, I promise you, I, I'll, uh, I'll take care of this. So I turned the car around, and down the road I went. And when I got on top of the Po River Bridge, headed towards Snell, there he was, right in the middle of the bridge, you know, right on the line. He's still just barely going. I pull up right on the bridge. No one behind me just stopped right in the middle of the road, let the window down, and there I sat. I said, get in. Let me take you where you're going. He looked at me, and now look at me, folks. I, I was dressed similar to what I'm dressed this morning. This is probably the best suit of clothes I have hanging in my closet. And that man was covered from head to toe with mud. A lunchbox. And he looked inside that little car and he says, Oh no, I couldn't ride in your car, sir. He said, Look at me. I said, Get in. It's not mine. Get in. <laughs> he kind of smiled and he opened the door and he got in, placed his lunchbox on the floor, and off we went. And I said, Where are you going? Let me take you home. No, he said, if you'll just get me down to Thornburg at the food line, I'll get a ride home. No, I said, the Lord spoke to me back there. You passed me as I was coming out of my driveway. You remember? I looked you in the eye. He said, yeah, I remember. I said, the Lord spoke to me, and you may not understand this, but God has spoken to me and said to see you home. It's my night to see you home. Now, I'm going to see you to the house safe. He says, sir, you don't understand what you just said. He says, it's a long ways from here. I said, where is it? He said, Sidon. Now, I know a lot of you don't know where Sidon is. But Ronnie knows exactly where Sidon's at. And so it's Sidon, 17 miles from my, my driveway. And that young man had been digging a ditch all day long. And he's going to try to make it to Sidon. I said, no, sir, we're going to Sidon. We started towards Sidon, and I started talking to him about Jesus. I said, what's your name? He said, Michael. And I said, Michael, let me ask you a question. Michael, if you don't live through the night from zero to 100%, how sure are you that you're going to be in heaven tomorrow morning? He said, you know, I've been thinking about this a lot. He said, my mother died recently. My daddy's died early in his life. He was a young man. I'm the only one left. He said, I've been thinking a lot about it. I said, I know. That's the reason God sent me this way. To speak a word of encouragement into your life. How many people pass you by on a daily basis? And God wants you to speak a word into their lives. A word of encouragement. He said, this is, this is quite a coincidence. I says, no, there's no coincidence in the kingdom of God. None whatsoever. And I said, we'll, we'll just ride and talk. Turn here, turn there, turn back here, turn. You know what I'm talking about. So I'm down there in logging country, you know, and we finally get to this little house and he says, turn in here, somewhat embarrassed. I pulled into this little house and it had two cars sitting on blocks and we pulled in through two mud holes and pulled in. There wasn't a light on. A little shotgun house down there in Sidon, and we sat there in the front of that little house. And he said, sir, I sure want to thank you for, for bringing me home. I said, well, let's, let me show you something, Michael. I turned the interior light on that little car. Turned the interior light on. I said, let me show you what the Word of God says about how you can know you're 100% sure that you're on your way to heaven when you draw your last breath. Would you let me do that? He said, yes, sir, I sure would. I opened the Word of God, and I began to share the Word of God. It's not important what men say, is it? But it is important what God's Word says. And the Word of God seals it, doesn't it? So I said, Michael, do you know that God loves you? He said, I hope so. I'm not too lovable sometimes. Look at me. I'm not too lovable either, and neither are you. Because the Word of God says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I said, that's you, Michael. That's me. That's everyone. It says whosoever. 
He said, that's, that's me, isn't it? I said, yes, sir, that's you. That's who it's talking about. But I said, Michael, there's a problem, and the problem is sin, what we've done against God. And it says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, according to Romans. I said, Michael, you ever sinned? He said, yes, sir, I, I have. I said, so have I. We all have. It says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Wouldn't it be refreshing that across America today, Willard and, and, and Dr. Sizemore, wouldn't it be refreshing if everyone in churches across America would be as honest before God as Michael was before God in that little car with the dome light on? He said, I'm a sinner. And I said, well, it also says for the wages of sin is death. That means separation from God. Like that door right there separates us from the outside, beloved. Your sin separates you from God. And I said, Michael... It says, for the wages of sin is death. You've worked all day long. You're covered head to toe with mud. And that you're working for wages. That's what you'll earn for your day's work. But that sin will separate you from God. For wages of sin is death, separation from God. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I said, in just a minute, I'm going to hand you this, Michael, and I'm going on my way. You and I will never lay eyes on each other this side of eternity, but this is my gift to you. You'll receive it with your hands, but you can't receive the gift of salvation, the gift of eternal life with your hands. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. Your parents can't get it for you. It does not matter. You have to receive it yourself with your heart, and here's how you do it. I said, Michael, let's read this. Let's read this together. He said, I can't read very well. I said, that's okay, Michael. That's okay. That's the reason God sent me. I said, it says, for whosoever. Aren't you glad, the fair of you, that God seemed fit to put whosoever in the word of God? It's okay to say amen, isn't it? <laughs> amen. You know, uh, a minute ago, I just, I just got, got carried away, beloved. I, Willard, I got carried away. I lifted my hands. Because I knew the ceiling tile wouldn't fall in. <laughs> and uh, I knew it would be all right. But it says, for whosoever calls, that means to pray and to ask, upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Now, beloved, let me ask you this. Is shall be saved one of those 30% promises in the Word of God? Or is that one of those 100% promises that God wants everyone to understand? That would be what? 100% promise, wouldn't it? Don't worry, we're not getting grades on this thing. We're not going to get any grades whatsoever. We're going to be okay. It's 100% promise. And I said, Michael, that means you. That means you. You can be 100% sure that you're on your way to heaven. He's crying by now, and I'm crying. It don't make any difference. And he says, because I knew that God was working in his heart. He says, I want to be 100% sure that I'm on my way to heaven. Right there in that little car, Michael bowed his head and asked Christ into his heart to be his Savior and to be his Lord so he'd know he was on his way to heaven. We got out, and we were standing in the front of that little shotgun house, not a light on, Standing there, and Michael, covered from head to toe, had his lunchbox. Now he's got the Word of God in his hand and the Lord Jesus Christ in his heart. And he looks at me, and he says this to me. He said, I just want to thank you for loving me enough to stop and tell me about Jesus. And then he reaches and gets a hold of me and hugs me, pulls me in, pulls me in real close. He said, nobody has ever cared enough about me to tell me about Jesus. We rejoiced in the, in the front yard of the little house. And I told him, I, I guess I had to be going along. And I looked at my watch as I backed out of the driveway and the clock on the dash, and I'm 30 minutes late. But I'm 30 minutes late for man's plans and not the perfect will of God. And let me tell you something. It's so good when you're in the very center of God's will, it doesn't make any difference about man's plans, does it? 
You spoke a little while ago and you sang a little while ago about being a friend of God. And I'll tell you, if you'll walk along with God and be in the center of God's will, you'll see miracles happening all around you. And sometimes you have to set men's plans aside. So here it is. So I start trying to remember how to get back out of where I was at. <laughs> now, if you've never been to see Don, you don't understand what I'm talking about, do you? You don't understand what I'm saying. So I'm twisted and I've turned and I'm thinking, how do I get out of here? And how do I get to the other side of Culpeper? I'll never make it in time, Lord. I'll bet you that there's some people kind of fretting over this thing. But it's okay. It's all right. I walked in, and I'm 45 minutes late. 45 minutes late to a meeting, and here's what was said when I walked in. We've already eaten. <laughs> Does it look like I've missed a meal? And I said, that's okay, I have too. I've already eaten. They said, well, it's time for the program. I said, well, let's get on with it. And guess what the program's about? Leading the lost to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me say this to you. Don't worry about men, men's desires. The appointments of your life to the degree that it controls you and you miss the will of God because God has something for you to do. It doesn't matter where you're seated in a, a Sunday school class or a school room. It does not matter. He's got things that your lives encounter that I'll never, I'll, I'll never encounter. And people who come across your path who the pastors here will never see. But God wants to use you to speak a word into their lives. Now, I'm not here to preach, but here it is. When do I, gotta, when do I have to come out of here? When do I have to be finished? I'm, I'm serious. No, 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 we got we to gotta roll over. All right, here it is. I'm here for the Gideons International, and you may say, well, who in the world are the Gideons? Well, I was speaking in Kentucky recently, and the sign out front says, we support missionaries in 200 countries, 97 languages. Thank you, Gideons International. Now, I submit to you, Fairview, just like you here at Fairview, you've already caught the vision of what the Gideons is truly all about, an extended missionary arm of your church going into those 200 countries and places that you'll never go to and never be able to see. But the fact of the matter is those Christian businessmen like myself pay our own way whenever we travel. And I travel a lot, but the fact of the matter is I pay my own way wherever I go so that when we come to churches just like Fairview, we can say to you that 100% of everything you give goes to the purchase and distribution of God's word. We'll take care of the manpower. We'll take care of all the work that needs to be done. And we'll do so gladly on a volunteer basis as we leave our businesses, we pay our own way from doorstep to doorstep, every meal, every flight, every hotel room, every interpreter, we pay our own way. So you, you can understand that the Gideons is something that's near and dear to my heart, but it's also near and dear to your hearts because you've been one of the greatest supporters of the Gideon ministry in the Fredericksburg camp of any church in this entire area over all these years. So if I've come to do one thing this morning, I've come to say to Fairview, you have been found faithful. And on behalf of those tens of thousands of people with an outstretched hand, I've come to say to you, thank you, because they'll never stand behind this pulpit and be able to look you in the eyes and say, I came to Jesus because of one Sunday morning, an old slow-talking man came and you seen fit to support a ministry called the Gideons. And so, fair of you, I've come for one reason, is to say to, to Pastor Jim, oh, I've gotten to love him like I love Brother Pastor Sizemore back there. I told him that he didn't know it, but he and I spend uh, most breakfasts on the weekdays together. And he looked at me kind of strange, but I told him I sure did appreciate those devotionals as I drink my coffee. You and I spend a lot of mornings together, sometimes at four in the morning. So as you're sleeping soundly, 
I'm out there enjoying those devotionals. So thank you, Dr. Sizemore, for your faithfulness over all these years, the radio program and all. I, I just appreciate you so much, and I love you for the support that you've given to the Gideons. Well, I must move along, and I guess I need to close this thing so we can have the Lord's Supper and all that. Are you sharing your faith? You see, the Gideons, we, we, we go about our mission, and we do it in two ways, by the placement of God's word to the busy highways and byways of life, or through personal witnessing as we travel, like I said with my, my dear friend Michael as I picked him up on the way to Sidon. Listen to me, beloved. That's what this ministry is all about, is sharing the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't have any other mission. Over 100 years, we've done one thing, is to share the Lord Jesus Christ. I was speaking at the uh, uh, Virginia State uh, Gideon's Convention in Roanoke, and, and I had uh, come out for lunch. I sat down in a little place at a, at a Starbucks thing there on a corner. It was a busy intersection, people all in this hotel down there. And the Lord said, uh, just sit right there, don't move. Don't move. Everybody says, man, you got to go. We got to go. The next session's starting. I'll be there in a little while. I'll be there in a little while. Lord said, don't move. Just sit right there. One hour, 45 minutes, nine souls passed by where I was sitting. Nine souls came to the Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. As they walked by, they, I would just simply ask them, how sure are you that you're on your way to heaven? Have you ever asked anybody that question? You'd be surprised at the answers you get. And you'd be surprised at the opportunities that open up to you. And all you have to do is simply say, how sure are you that you're on your way to heaven? And they say, well, I'm not real sure at all. Would you like to be? Yes, I would be. In an hour and 45 minutes, nine souls come to Jesus. I sat right there on a stool at the, uh, right there at the busy intersection at Starbucks. And everybody says, man, you're late for the thing. No, I'm fine. I'm good. Everything's good. Finally, the crowds died down Willard, and I went on about what, uh, what plans men had for me. Next weekend, I was in South Carolina, Columbia, South Carolina, and uh, went to lunch. Went to lunch down there at a busy deli, and uh, I could see God, God's hand all, all over this place. And uh, so I just sat down. The guy said, we got to go. I, I'll, I'll be there in a minute. we got to go. In one hour's time, in one hour's time, People pass by and simply say, excuse me, remember what Dr. Sizemore said this morning? You got to ask a question in order to get an answer. I said, excuse me, I see you're busy, but let me ask you a question. How sure are you that you're on your way to heaven? I just asked the question. In one hour's time, Columbia, South Carolina, busy street and people coming in and out of that deli, five people came to Jesus. Five people give their hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's simply what it's all about. Now, beloved, we're here this morning, and you, here are several ways you can help, and this is one of them. First of all, we need your prayers. Continue to pray for this ministry called the Gideons International, that God would continue to open doors to allow us to step through those doors, and he has on many occasions, doors that were locked that no man can go through. Second of all, if you're a Christian businessman here, I'd love to talk to you. We've got Gideons in this church. And we'd love to have you in this Gideon camp. And use the Gideon card program. And I know you use it on a regular basis. I get reports back on a regular basis. And this morning as you leave, you'll have the opportunity to support the Gideons through this ministry as we place the word of God. And I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you on behalf of all those that will never stand behind this pulpit. Now you say, Ted, are you sure that those Bibles really reach people? For the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you sure that lives are being changed? Well, I often have that asked, but it also, also it's followed up by this. Ted, you stay gone a lot with the Gideons, and you're, you're in a different church most every Sunday. Why? Because one night, a man on a college campus stood at the top of the steps, and a very well-dressed man in a navy blue suit and a red tie, and he held out a little green testament. And he held it out, and I looked at him. There was something different about the man. His countenance was different. He was kind, and he said these words. Could I give you a copy of the Word of God? 
Now, beloved, I don't know who it was that gave the funds to purchase a scripture, but I took that copy that night, and I didn't look at it for another eight years, put it in my pocket, went to class that night, and never looked at it for eight years. But then I started reading the Word of God, and I read it for over a year, and then God got a hold of my heart. A praying wife, a praying church, and the Word of God. Now, I don't know who it was that gave the funds, but I one day will tell them in a place called heaven that I appreciate them so much. Thank you is what I'm going to say. Because in March of 1981, I remembered every word that I'd read from that little Gideon New Testament, and I gave my heart to Christ. Now, he's allowed me to travel all over the world, from the jungles of Africa to the tip of South America and every major city in America, as I extend that testament from one of you and say could I please give you a copy of the word of God if we could see it through the eyes of God I believe we could see your fingerprints all over each one of those testaments and placed into those outstretched hands fair of you you are to be thanked you are to be commended for all that you do and the vision that you have thank you and we love you God bless you